it will take us two classes. Yes, then two classes cranial nerves and uh, one class autonomic nervous system, and then it will be common uh, like such what in organs of sense, cranial nerves and autonomic nervous system, and that is all. It's like you uh, after that you master anatomy. Yes, completed. Yes. So, and first topic it will be, and first we will start with organ of vision and organ of perception. So, actually, very easy topic. This I think you will uh, read yourself. You should read, uh, you should revise structure orbit. Yes, all the walls, communications. So, this is eyeball. And eyeball consists of tunics. You studied it at school, very simple. Yes, there are three tunics. The outermost tunic, it is fibrous tunic, tunica fibrosa, that consists of sclera and cornea. Then under it, there is vascular tunic. Yes, it is choroid, ciliary body, and also iris. Yes, and the innermost, it is new, neural tunic or retina. Yes? Retina. Very easy. You will read it yourself. You should focus on structure of retina. Uh, retina consists of uh, two layers. We can say pigment and nervous layer. But histologically, there are ten layers of cells. So these ten layers of cells you also have to know. So please read it. Then there is, I don't know why, uh, there is such a term as nucleus of an eyeball. So a nucleus of an eyeball uh, are all the structures which do not belong to any tunic and they are located in the center of an eyeball. So a nucleus of an eyeball includes vitreous body, yes, and lens and aqueous humor of anterior and posterior chambers. Actually, what you have to understand is that eyeball is a system of lens, yes, convex lens, because the main aim of this eyeball is to converge rays, and finally, they should be totally converged on the retina, yes? If rays get converged exactly on the retina, we get clear vision. If um, rays, they converge in front of the retina, then it is myopia, yes? We can uh, easily see objects which are near to us, but we cannot see objects which are far from us. If um, rays converge behind the retina, then it is hypermetropia, yes? We can see everything that is far, but we cannot see clearly, like we cannot read, yes, this is hypermetropia. Okay, uh, you, what? No, it, uh, all of these things are very easy. You also have to study the uh, structure of optic nerve. Uh, it's very simple also. Uh, there are several parts. Um, intraocular part, that is in the eyeball. Then it uh, goes to intraorbital part, that is from the posterior pole of the eyeball to entrance into the optic canal. Intracanalicular part inside the optic canal. And then intracranial part. So what you have to understand is that uh, this optic nerve, it lasts or up to the optic chiasm. This is optic nerve. After that optic chiasm, yes, after the optic chiasm, it is optic tract. What is optic chiasm? Okay. White matter structure. Uh -huh. white yes, it matter. is white matter. Okay, let's talk about optic analyzer. So this eyeball works as a receptor part of optic analyzer. Actually, you have to know uh, what is analyzer. So cortical analyzer, it is a set of structures that includes peripheral part, receptor part, then conducting tract, and then cortical center. So for optic analyzer, peripheral part is located in the eyeball, if to be more precise, in the retina, yes, in rods and cones. You studied it at school. And then conducting tract, it is what you will draw, all of you draw for the next lesson. And cortical center, we studied. Yes, where is cortical center of vision located? Calcarine sulcus. Mm. Yes. Okay. Cortex around calcarine sulcus, yes. And so what, uh, how is optic analyzer, how should it be drawn? First of all, you have to understand that conducting tract of optic analyzer consists of four neurons. Three of them are located in the retina, in these ten layers of retina. So first it is rods and cones. Uh, it is located in the outer nuclear layer of retina, these uh, cells. What is the difference, Shaurio, please tell us, between rods and cones? No. Mm -hmm. But reds are for white colors and cones for different type of colors. Yes, so uh, rods, they are for night vision, yes, uh, black and white, and cones, yes, they are for colored vision. There are three types of cones. Three types. Violet, yes. yellow, yeah. violet, yellow, and for the three colors, no? Yes. F violet, yellow, I remember. I think, what? Red. Red, and what else? Red, yellow. 
red, blue, and something. Uh, one of them is definitely red. Red, yellow, blue? What? Blue, green, and red, I think. Mm. Yes. yes. What? And this, um, there is such a disease, yes, that is known as Dalton's disease. Mm. When uh, people are unable, like color blindness, yes. not all the color blindness, but especially red color blindness. Yes, these people cannot identify red color. And this is sex linked disease. Yes, so it is linked with um, X chromosome. Yes, so that's why mainly men suffer from it. For a woman to suffer from it, we need her father to have yes. this pathology, yes, and her mother to be a carrier, yes, yes? because it is recessive. Yes. Recessive, recessive. Fine. yes. So if a mom is a carrier and dad has but Dalton's disease, and only in this case there is a chance that a daughter will have this disease also. Yes, and uh, also if person suffers from this Dalton's disease, uh, he uh, in Russia, for example, he has no rights to get driving license. Mm -hmm. No, because he will confuse this mm -hmm. colors of traffic lights. Traffic light. no, no, yes. Uh, what in India is possible? Yes. Everything is possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yes, and this rods and cons. This is a receptor part. First order neuron. These are rods and cons. Then second order neuron is also in the retina. These are bipolar cells because bi bipolar. One axon, one one uh, dendrite, one axon. Yes, and these bipolar cells they are located in the internal inner nuclei of retina. And third of the neuron, these are ganglionic cells, and they are located in the ganglionic layer of retina. And so axons of third order neurons, they form optic nerve. This is optic nerve. Optic nerve is located more medially in the eyeball. And what this one, uh, lu fovea lutea, mm -hmm. central Same. fovea, yes, it is located more laterally. This fovea centralis, it is a place where numerous cones are located. Uh, the, it is a place of the best vision. Mm -hmm. And here, in, where there is disc of optic nerve, it is blind spot. So here, when rays falls onto this part of retina, person do not see anything. Each of us has it. Yes, it's easily to check. For example, if you close one uh, eye, yes, and you will uh, start, you know, like you should look forward. And you should move your finger, but you shouldn't look at the finger intentionally, yes? You will finally find a place where you do not see the finger. Yes. Oh, I'm I'm seeing everything. Yes. No. <laughs> no. First of all, you should move horizontally, exactly at the level of your pupils. There will be somewhere slightly laterally. You f you'll find this place where this uh, tip of the finger will disappear, and then it will appear again. Close the second eye. <laughs> uh, what? Be we have two eyeballs, and that's why these blind areas they are covered. Yes. So when we look with two eyes, we do not see it. But when we look with only one eye, uh, it is no present. photoreceptor. Yes, spot. yes, because here there is disc of optic nerve. Ram uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, optic nerve is formed by axons of third order neurons of optic analyzer, yes? So, it, it, this optic nerve, they pass through optic canal, and then they reach level of optic chiasm. Yes, so some structures of skull you will also have to revise. And optic chiasm, it is decussation of fibers of optic nerve. Not all the fibers decussated is partial decussation. Only fibers from temporal eye field decussate. So eye field, what we see with our one eye, we can divide into two parts, nasal eye field and temporal eye field. And because rays also decussate, so uh, from temporal, what we see from temporal side, it, this rays falls onto nasal part of retina. So these fibers which come from the nasal part of retina, but from the temporal eye field, they decussate. Yes, and these fibers which come from nasal eye field by, but from temporal part of retina, they do not decussate. So that's why optic tracts, which are formed after the um, optic chiasm, they are formed by fibers from um, temporal part of retina of the same side, ipsilateral side, and from nasal part of retina from contralateral side. Yes.
Okay. So, and then optic tracts are still formed by axons of third order neuron of optic analyzer. And then these fibers of optic tract, they come up to subcortical centers of vision. And so, what are subcortical And? Mm-hmm. What else? What else? Oh, uh-huh. Lateral geniculate lateral bodies, geniculate bodies okay. of course. So, some part of fib- so first fibers enter uh, lateral geniculate bodies, yes? And some fibers form decussations there. Uh, well, not decussations, they form synapse with bodies of fourth order neuron. Some fibers just pass through, and through the brachium of superior colliculus, they reach superior colliculus. And these fibers, they uh, form synapse here with gray matter of superior colliculi, from tactum, yes? Some fibers move, uh, continue moving um, to the salamus, and they form fibers, uh, form synapse with posterior nuclei of salamus. So, fourth order neuron for different fibers is located in different places. It can be in lateral geniculate body, at the level of superior colliculus, and in posterior nuclei of salamus. So, this is fourth order, this is fourth order, and this is also fourth order neuron. Okay, so those fibers which form synapse with superior uh, gray matter Colliculi. of superior colliculi, they do not move to cortical center. They start um, tactus spinal tract, and also they form synapse with motor nucleus, uh, not motor nucleus, with Edinger Westphal nucleus, autonomic nucleus of ocular motor nerve. Mm-hmm. And from it, uh, these fibers, they join ocular motor nerve, reach ciliary ganglion, it is autonomic mm-hmm. parasympathetic ganglion, and postganglionic fibers from it, they come up to um, sphincter papilla muscle and also to ciliary body. Ciliary body is a part of uh, vascular tunic and it regulates process of accommodation. So when the ciliary body gets contracted, mm-hmm then lens becomes more convex. So our eye is tuned to a near vision. It is like that because um, like we are calm, we are not in danger, we don't need such a near vision. So during evolution, when ancient people, they were sitting around the fire, yes, and they were not in danger, they should had to look at something that is near them. And when this muscle get relaxes, then lens gets flattened, and our eye is tuned to far vision. When we are in danger, when people are hunting, yes, these Asian people were hunting, uh, they had to see very well. The same about diameter of papilla. When we are not in danger, we don't need a lot of light to enter uh, through the pupil, yes, and to fall onto the retina. So we don't need such a clear vision. Blood vision is also okay. But when we are in danger, we need maximum amount of light to pass through the pupil, yes? And that's why dilated papilla muscle has sympathetic supply only. Sphincter papilla muscle uh, has only parasympathetic nerve supply. Both of these muscles, they are in the structure of iris. Iris is also part of vascular tunic, and uh, it regulates diameter of pupil. Uh, at this p- papillary margin of iris, there is sphincter papilla muscle. At the ciliary margin of iris, there is dilator papilla muscle. So they both regulate diameter of pupil. Okay. And so those fibers which form synapses with uh, lateral geniculate bodies and optic uh, posterior nuclei of salamus, they continue moving upward, pass through internal capsules, they form optic radiation, yes, pass through posterior limb of internal capsule, and they reach cortical center of uh, vision. That is, um, yes, cortex around calcarine sulcus. So that's it. This is optic analyzer. Only if you draw it correctly, you will pass. Okay. Yes. One more thing, uh, olfactory, um, organ of olfaction, also uh, you have to study for the next lesson. First you have to revise also structure of nasal cavity, uh, bony nasal cavity, and also you have to revise that there is uh, olfactory mucosa and respiratory mucosa, yes, all of the things. And then, um, okay, and this first order neuron of this um, olfactory analyzer, it is located in 
mucosa in in mucosa in the Superior. olfactory mucosa yes of nasal cavity yes. and then axons of first order neurons of this olfactory analyzer they form olfactory nerves which pass through uh, uh, olfactory foramen of cribriform plate of an esmoid bone Yes. And then axons of this first order neuron, they form synapses on the axons of second order neuron, which form olfactory bulb. Mm -hmm. This olfactory bulb is formed by uh, the cells, and they are known as mitral cells. Olfactory bulb, yes. And then from olfactory bulb, backward, uh, olfactory tract starts, mm -hmm. yes. And then at the level of olfactory triangle, here it's not quite correct, at the level of an olfactory triangle, where there is anterior perforated substance, fibers enter uh, cerebral hemispheres. And uh, where is cortical center of olfaction? Yes. So in the uncus, there are three ways how to reach uncus. Uh, they form three stria. Uh, lateral stria, medial stria, and intermediate stria. So medial stria is the shortest way. It's directly from anterior perforated substance to uncus. Then uh, intermediate, intermediate passes from anterior perforated substance to uh, what is it? To corpus callosum. It is the longest way. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, corpus callosum. Then fornicate gyrus, and then to the uncus, like this. So that's why we are saying that all of the structures belong to olfactory brain, renencephalon. Yes. yes, and lateral, it is passes through cingulate gyrus. Um, what is written? No, I was wrong. This is gyrus, yes. This is the longest. It is uh, lateral one mm -hmm. through cingulate gyrus and then uh, perihippocampal mm -hmm. gyrus and tuncus, and intermediate from anterior perforated substance to corpus callosum, then to the fornix and then tuncus. So there are three ways how to reach cortex of uncus. This is olfactory analyzer. What was the mammillary body pathway? Yes. So, uh, olfactory analyzer is the most ancient, yes, and the main difference between olfactory analyzer and all the other analyzers is that first it comes to cortex, and only after that, from uncus, it goes to subcortical center, to mammillary bodies, yes, mm -hmm. and from mammillary bodies, it goes to salamus, uh, mammillary salamic tract, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes, so it is the main difference between olfactory analyzer and all the other. That's why it's actually somewhere written that, for example, in Salamus, mm. uh, there are subcortical centers of all anterior. Okay. Yes. 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 Median yes. one. Median one. No. All no. types of sensation Sensory. except olfaction. Actually, for olfaction, there are also centers. But uh, the prob no, um, what is the difference is that there it comes after the cortex. So actually, maybe it's not even quite correct to call it subcortical center because first it comes to cortex and then after that to these structures. Like our, you are talking about the anterior thalamic yes. nuclei. Yes. Yes. So it is not the center for the sub. Uh, it is, but just okay. for for all the other subcortical centers, first information comes to them and okay. from them to cortical center. Mm -hmm. And for infection, it is different. First to cortex and then to these centers. Thalamus, okay. Yes. Salamus and mammillary bodies. Mm. Yes.